Okay, I want to talk about our topology a little bit before we dive in. Because what we're going to do is we're going to address the fact that we have a number of devices that we just described, and they are going to include my spine switch. Now I want to talk about this from the perspective of the way I'm going to do my implementation. So I'm going to create a deployment whereby I'm going to have spine 1, and then spine 1 will actually be connected to leaf 1 and leaf 2. Now, when it comes time to do this implementation, we are going to need to have the APIC up and operational. Now, the APIC does not come configured. So there are going to be some things that we're going to need to be able to bring up the application profile infrastructure controller, and we're going to have to address those things immediately because it's not until that I have a functioning APIC, what we're going to call APIC1, will I be able to be able to control this fabric. Now, what is going to end up happening is, is that I'm going to be connected to leaf one and I'm going to be connected to leaf two. And what we're basically going to do is we're going to use the second connection as a standby. This is going to be our active connection to do the configuration. Now, we also know that ordinarily this would actually happen with multiple APICs. It's just that so happens in our lab, I only have the one. Now, what I'm going to end up doing, first of all, is, is I need to basically bootstrap the APIC. Now there's going to be some things that we're going to need to implement because later on we're going to be talking about how we're going to send data. So for instance I receive data from an endpoint. Let's say I receive data from endpoint 1, whatever that is, and I want to send data to endpoint 2. What we see is, is they're on separate switches. Now, in order to be able to do this implementation to allow this to work, what's going to end up happening is I'm going to assign a VTEP address. So each device will get a VTEP, a VXLAN tunneling endpoint address. And we're going to be spending some time talking about these, obviously, because this is what makes things work with regard to being able to extend traffic. So as I receive traffic coming from endpoint 1 that needs to go to endpoint 2, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to create a connection between endpoints. So between VTEP addresses, I'm going to create this through the deployment of what we refer to as an overlay. Now, you'll actually see that we're going to get overlay 1 from the very, very beginning, and this is going to be part of my configuration and we're going to need to define some things and one of these things that we're going to define is what is referred to as the infrastructure VLAN. Now for the purposes of this class I'm going to use VLAN 4. Now the importance is, is that this VLAN should not be used anywhere else in the infrastructure because later on we're going to find that we may actually have a requirement of extending VLAN 4 out of the fabric that we've created. So outside of, I'll go ahead and grab my blue pen here. Outside of the fabric that we've created, I may have to actually extend that VLAN out in order to be able to control resources like AVS, application virtual switches, and I may actually be have a requirement to be this to, to access something like a remote leaf concepts that we'll get into later on in the class. Just understand that it really should be a, a VLAN that's not used everywhere anywhere. The other thing is, is I'm going to have to assign a TEP range, a TEP address range, a tunneling endpoint address range. We'll take the default in the system, which I think is 10.0.0.0 slash 16. I'm also going to need to configure something called the GIPO. The GIPO stands for the generic IP outside addresses. And honestly, what they are going to be used for is it's going to be a range of multicast addresses that are actually going to be used to allow me to be able to flood between bridge domains. Now, we're going to get into this when we get into the conversation of logical constructs. So we're not there yet. So again, I got to introduce some concepts because we're going to actually be queried or tasked to be able to implement them. The other thing that I'm actually going to have to give it is I'm going to have to give it an address. And that address is going to be part of my OOB, my out of band management 
address range. So this is going to be an actual IP address that's going to be assigned to the APIC. In this class, we will be using 10.1.100. I'm sorry, 10. I'm using the ACI address. I mean the UCS address. 10.1.255.254. And also remember, I said that the APIC is actually just a application running on a C220M4 server. That C220M4 server has a SIMC address that's going to allow me to be able to access the APIC application that's running on that server. And that SIMC address is going to be how I set everything up because what I'm going to do is I'm just simply going to KVM into it. And the address for that is going to be 10.1.255.254. So to configure the APIC, I will have to connect to the UCS server where the application is being hosted. And it's going to be that device that's going to be connected via those 10 gigabit Ethernet connections that are part of the conversion network adapter, the VIC-1225, that's installed in this C-series server that's going to be connected to my leaves. This is going to be connected to leaf 1. This one will be connected to leaf 2. Now, when we do go through and we do this implementation, basically, like I said, I'm going to assign it the address of 10.1.255.252. And for the next little bit, what we're going to do is we're going to use this address to be able to access the graphical user interface that is going to be used to configure the APIC. Now, this is going to require this to be actually configured. We're going to have to reload the APIC, and we're going to have to wait five to eight minutes, possibly, before the APIC will actually be addressable, either via the CLI or via the GUI. A lot of people don't understand or accept the fact that there is a command line interface for these devices. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at how we can actually use the command line interface to be able to facilitate things. And then later on, we will talk about programmability. Specifically, we'll talk about how to use the Postman application to be able to deploy application and deploy configurations to the fabric. Because at that particular juncture, we'll have a better understanding of how the fabric works. And then we can look closer at the optimizations. Most classes that I've taken from Cisco jump almost immediately into programmability. And at the end of the day, as a network person, if I don't understand the fabric and how the fabric is, first of all, assembled and how the fabric is maintained and what communications take place inside of the fabric, I'm pretty lost as far as actually feeling like I know what would happen or how to handle ha the stuff if there were a problem, i.e., a troubleshooting scenario or something should fail. But I wanted to go through this illustration with regard to how we're going to be configuring the APIC before we actually bootstrapped it. So the next video is going to be from the command line access, or actually it's going to be from the KVM into APIC 1's C200 or C220 M4 host. I'll see you guys in that video.